This is the AM News on the AM Show. Let's begin now starting with uh, there's an, ease, an easy calm in the Tonkokrome community of the Ashanti region following the death of three in a clash between the youth of the area and security men protecting a mining concession. A resident was allegedly shot dead during a confrontation with the private security operatives on Saturday. This infuriated the youth who launched a reprisal attack and lynched two of the alleged attackers. Three persons have been confirmed dead following a clash between residents of Mansutun Tukrum in the Amanse South District and some heavily built men allegedly protecting a mining concession. A resident was allegedly shot dead during a confrontation with a private security operative Saturday afternoon. This infuriated the youth who launched a reprisal attack and lynched two of the alleged attackers. Emmanuel Apia is an eyewitness. A single man brought in a military men to chase out a man when he went to their side. They unfortunately gave warning shots which put to two people who are no more. The truth of the matter is that mine a A day before the incident, the chiefs and residents of Mansutun Tukrum staged a protest to demand the establishment of a community mining scheme in the area. <laughs> They chase us with policemen and security guards. They are always intimidating us with the police and the military. We are pleading with government to establish a community mining scheme for us. We won't let Asanko mines take over our community. The indigents say mining is the main source of income for most of them, hence the need for the government to expedite action to place them under community mining. They are unhappy months after applying to be placed under the scheme, the government is yet to approve the community mining at Tuntukrum. Enty <laughs> We sought the establishment of a community mining scheme, but since then, we have been intimidated throughout. Why should we be killed for seeking a community mining scheme in our own community? This is an election year, so Dr. Baumia must act. If they don't establish the scheme by June, we won't participate in the election. The district security council will be meeting with managers of Asanko Gold and leaders in the Tontochrome community for a possible solution to the current impasse. For Joy News, my name is Nana Bwache Dankwa Yadom, Tontochrome. About 250 students of Ejiso Senior High Technical School have been displaced following a rainstorm that ripped off a dormitory block of the school. The Krapa MA Junior High School and Ejiso Experimental Schools also had their roofs ripped off. Oheming Tewia, who visited the schools, says authorities have sought temporary shelter in a warehouse for the affected students. It is Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. 
the day set aside by school authorities of a Jusso Senior High Technical School to allow parents and guardians to visit their walls. It comes less than 24 hours that rainstorm devastated the school's oldest dormitory block, ripping off the roof. This means students are not only stranded, but the academic work is disrupted. Municipal Chief Executive for Ejusso, Samuel Odro Frimpong, who led officials to visit the school, says efforts are being made to resolve the issue of accommodation for students of Ejusso Senior High Technical School. The shoes fell on the high tension wires. The ECG people were also here to help, help remove the wires and to ensure that power is restored to the school. So in the evening, we helped the boys to sleep in one of their classrooms. So this morning, together with the presiding member, one of members, assembly members here, the PTA chairman, I had already informed my member of parliament, Dr. Joan Pontiakuma, who tasked that this morning I come with assembly engineers to come and do the proper assessment so that we can get the estimate for bringing back the uh, roofing. But because the boys slept in the classroom yesterday, that was a, a temporary measure. We needed to get a place for them this morning. Lucky enough for us, PBC, they have some buildings around. So we contacted the regional manager and he has given us one of the rooms. At the moment, we are doing the clean, clean up exercise there to make sure that we put the place uh, in, uh, in shape to transfer all the 150 boys to the place so they can have a place to put their head. Saturday's heavy rainfall did not only affect Ejusso Senior High Technical School, but also affected Ejusso Experimental School and that of Krapa M. Basie School. Municipal Chief Executive Samuel Odo Frimpon tells Joy News the Municipal Assembly is collaborating with a member of parliament for the area to find lasting solution to the issue. This is the oldest building so far as the school is concerned. It's been here for almost 80 years. So no wonder uh, it was affected by the rains yesterday. We will rely on the report from the engineers, whether we need to pull down the whole building or just maintain the existing one. So we, this morning we met the entire student population. We have given them all the needed assurance. There are calls for the school to be closed down temporary, but Municipal Education Director Kobina Owusu says school authorities are collaborating with the Municipal Assembly to find an amicable solution to the problem. They are about to vacate for the semester, but you see, unfortunately this happened. I believe if God should have heard our, our prayer, we should have prayed that you should, this thing should have happened during vacation. But it, it never happened so. They are about to have the examinations by the end of this semester. To, there are, some of them are going to prepare for WASI. We, they have to be trained. And because of these issues, it's going to affect them a great deal. You see, they have a lot of syllables to go through. Uh, I don't think that they have completed all their syllables for the semester. So we believe that we have to, you know, sit down with the head of the institution, discuss about how best we have to vacate very early for them to go to their various homes. Whereas we also look at the structure and try to put them right. From Ejusso, for Joy News, Ohim Interior reporting. Moving on, former OT Regional Minister Joshua Makubu says he was a bit surprised about his removal from office. He indicated no concerns were raised about him during his tenure in office for redress. He found it strange when the president told him he could not be part of his government after the ministerial reshuffle on the 14th of February. Joshua Makubu has been interacting with correspondent Peter Senu two weeks after his removal from office. I had a performance contract signing with all MMDs in the OT region. So it was a call from the deputy chief of staff, uh, my own brother and friend, Carlos Bombrazi, that His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, would like to have my audience 
uh, a face-to-face -face audience and not a phone conversation uh, that day if I was around Accra. So I was in OT region, but I could still make it to Accra, but I should be getting to Accra around 7, 8. So it's okay. So 9 is okay. Yeah. So I drove to Accra and I was at a Jubilee house around 9 o'clock. Then the president had a lot of things to do. Eventually, somewhere around 10, 10, 30, I got the opportunity of uh, uh, meeting him and uh, he communicated his decision to do a reshuffle that made me know that unfortunately I was not going to be part of his government. That was it. That's how I got the news. So how did you take it? Oh, right from the one of my appointment. Uh, even before my appointment, we know that uh, the right or the decision to appoint and to remove light in the hands of the president. And we also made to understand that in politics, anything can happen at any point in time. So like soldiers in the battlefield, you either kill or you are killed. If you are in the battlefield and then you become a target and then you are shot, those parents, friends, you know that you are in the battlefield and there were two options. It's either you continue to serve your nation or maybe... Well, but but did way. this come at, uh, as a surprise to you? Yeah, I would say I was a bit surprised because for my three years in office, there has never been any issue where I was called to come and provide some explanation regarding my work and my relationship with traditional authorities and other things. At least if there were some times your attention were drawn to certain things that maybe were not going well, you could feel that, okay, if these things were not going well and I'm not able to rectify them, it might be difficult for you to continue. But that didn't come to my attention. So I, 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 I was surprised, but on the other hand, I was not too surprised because right from the one, other people want to get into the office that I was in and they didn't guess. So they would never go to rest. There were some people who had certain expectations of me that maybe by my conscience or availability of resources, I might not be able to uh, tow that line. So all these things, uh, you don't sit in a political, even the president of the Republic of Ghana, if uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mama gets the opportunity to declare him not a president today. So that's the game we found ourselves in. So I wouldn't say it was entirely, uh, I was surprised or was surprised because I've been preconditioned to know that, look, at any point in time, as an appointee of the government, you are the back and call of your appointor and any decision could be taken, either favorable or unfavorable. Now, maternal mental health disorders are conditions that can result in a mother committing suicide or even murdering her baby. Research also shows that maternal mental health disorders can cause preterm deliveries as well as stunting and nervous system development delays in children. As scary as the condition is, a majority of healthcare workers in Ghana do not have any knowledge about maternal mental health disorders. This according to the World Health Organization's Maternal Mental Health Situation Analysis in Ghana. Now, stakeholders have been discussing the seriousness of this disorder at a research dissemination meeting at Bolgatanga in the Upper East region, from where correspondent Albert Sorry reports. Maternal mental health disorders include depression, anxiety, and substance use disorder. Symptoms generally include extreme sadness, difficulty for a mother to bond with her baby, suicidal thoughts, and difficulty concentrating. This may occur during pregnancy, childbirth, or after delivery. In Ghana over the years, maternal mental health disorders have scarcely been discussed until now. The World Health Organization has been doing a situation analysis on maternal mental health in Ghana. The research has revealed a rather worrying situation as far as the prevalence of the disorders in Ghana is concerned. Lead consultant Dr. Promise Sefoga shared some of the findings at a Northern Zone dissemination meeting held in Bolgatanga. 
So these were studies done from across Ghana. In Boko, we found the prevalence of 50.4% of postpartum depression. The other one we did in Greater Accra, at the district level, we found about 9%. At the regional hospital, those who are delivering the regional hospital, about 31%. Those who are delivering in the tertiary hospital, where more complicated cases are referred to, about 41%. And that gave a national average of about 20%. 27%. Yes, yeah, sometimes some the women say, no, don't bring the baby to me. I haven't delivered. This is not my baby. Some will just withdraw. Some to the extent of attempting to harm the baby because in their mind something is telling them that I need to harm this baby myself. Otherwise, something else comes to harm the baby. These are all manifestations of severe forms of the disorder. And so if somebody has delivered and showing these things, they say, no, don't bring the baby to me. Don't take the baby away. This will be the early warning signs. We shouldn't stigmatize them that, hey, something is wrong with them. She's mad. But it is a medical problem as a result of the pregnancy and delivery. Bring them and let's deal with them before it becomes severe or it becomes uh, more complicated. He said the research also revealed that a majority of healthcare workers in Ghana do not know about maternal mental health disorders. So this work interviewed healthcare workers, healthcare managers, policy makers, pregnant women, postpartum mothers, as well as women who have suffered some of this depression or maternal mental health disorder. And we found that majority of the healthcare workers say they don't have enough knowledge on the condition. Majority of them say they don't know about the tools that we can use to screen. Screening for a disease means the patient doesn't have the symptoms yet, but you want to check to see if there are any early warning signs so that we can detect it early and then refer or manage it to prevent the complications. Because maternal mental health disorders lead to complications that affect the mother and the child. They lead to preterm birth, they lead to other problems for the mother, they lead to problems for the child. Some of these children tend to have brain and nervous system development delays. Some research done in the northern region has even found that children of mothers who were affected tend to have stunted growth. They are about three times likely to have stunted growth. They have neurocognitive and developmental delays. At the same time, these conditions affect the woman's bonding with the children, relation with the family. And we've been told that 20% of death of women after delivery is as a result of suicide. And a human being will commit suicide when they have severe depression. So, what policies are being adopted to help address the problem of maternal mental health disorders in Ghana? Dr. Martin Buama is the technical officer for maternal and child health at the country office of the World Health Organization. We are looking at integrating um, the interventions right through all the levels of um, the healthcare, right from the communities through to the tertiary facilities. And so it is something that um, we are discussing and will support the Ministry of Health and Ghana Health Service to look at this. We'll be focusing on issues of capacity building for the healthcare workers. Uh, currently, we don't have any policy that speaks directly to maternal mental health issues. And so people or organizations um, like the parliament and the Ministry of Health and Ghana Health Service, civil society, we all have to come together and put in the right policy that will address this maternal mental health issues co comprehensively. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, Bolgatanga. Still on the issues of health, management of the University of Allied and Al Health and Allied Sciences is asking for support to complete a multi-purpose laboratory complex on its main campus in Sokode in the whole municipality of the Volta region. Vice Chancellor Professor Lydia Aziato, who extended the appeal, says it has become imperative for the labs to be used in training the students, hence the urgent need for its completion. She was speaking at a white coat ceremony for students of the schools of medicine and pharmacy. The 
laboratory complex is designed to have the capacity to undertake health and allied sciences experiments and research. The complex would also have an ICT laboratory, basement, offices for staff, a cafeteria, a library, a museum for educational purposes, among others. Speaking at the White Coat Ceremony, the Vice Chancellor of UHAS, Professor Lydia Ziatu, underscored the urgent need for the completion of the complex. So I wish that you go over your oath, you let it sink into your spirit, man, your bone, and your flesh, and you live the oath. Before we leave here, our parents were here, our stakeholders were here, friends of you has. Our roads still pending. If you know anybody who matter in government, advocates for the university. You came in, you saw our road. Our laboratory complex just behind this auditorium is the largest in the country, maybe in the sub-region. Unfortunately, it didn't come finished. We are looking for companies, individuals. You can set up one lab for us, finish it, and name it after yourself or your organization. We need support to complete our lab complex. President of the Accra College of Medicine, Professor Ifwa Hesse, implored the students to ensure integrity in their field of work and eschew corruption. Try and make every problem or see every problem as a solution waiting to be found. So it becomes a challenge for you. And when you do that, you find that you become innovative, thinking and entrepreneur. Every problem is a challenge and a solution waiting to be found. You. Integrity in the health profession is key. Always doing the right thing, whether people are watching you or not. Remembering that though man may not see you, God does, and he ultimately will be the judge and the rewarder of everybody. Then love your country. Don't be in a hurry to abandon it and go and develop another country. Hmm? We are the only ones who can develop our own country. You are the future. Dream the dreams and follow God's lead to make this country what you want it to be. 139 students from the schools of medicine and pharmacy participated in the white coat ceremony to mark their transition from the study of preclinical to clinical health sciences. Fred Kwame Asari. Joy News, Soko D. And that's how we wrap up for AM News on the AM Show.